In 2019, one in 11 people globally were aged 65 and older. By 2050, it'll be one in six. These shifting demographics, a combination of a long-term increase in life expectancy and falling birth rates, means the average person is getting older. And while we should celebrate living longer, we also have to accept that means working longer too. We really need to think about what this is going to look like when there's fewer younger people and more older people and how this will work moving forward. It could mean greater economic burden falling on the shrinking group of working adults, but it could also be an opportunity for individuals as well as companies. The multi-generational age diverse workforce uh, benefits in a whole range of ways. Those policies that benefit older workers are highly likely to also benefit younger and midlife workers. Society is having to adapt to this new reality. The companies that realize that age is just a number could reap the biggest rewards. My name is Christina Matz, and I'm an associate professor at Boston College in the School of Social Work, and I study uh, the aging workforce and productive aging. So when Social Security was started back in 1965, you know, the expected life expectancy was really around 70, 75. And so people were expected to, you know, spend a handful of years in retirement. And so now that we're looking at, you know, uh, 15, 20, 30 years potentially in retirement, being able to st sustain your income over the course of that period of time is a real issue. So does that mean we have to keep people in work longer or do we need to rethink the way we work more broadly? It's really important that we make sure that we shift away from this focus on chronological age more to capabilities and opportunities and strengths. There's still rampant amounts of ageism that exist in the workplace. We see it in the rates of reemployment among unemployed workers. We've actually seen an increase in age discrimination throughout the pandemic. In recent years, age discrimination has been revealed beyond the anecdotal and witnessed across the corporate level. Big companies have been accused of laying off thousands of older employees to change their image and attract younger workers. A study for Deloitte suggested that if you're older, you're likely to be considered less capable, less able to adapt, or less willing to pitch in. We found that individuals who are on age diverse work teams are more engaged than those who are on age segregated work teams. And so really having that diversity of opinion, the diversity of skills and talents, the diversity of experience really makes a huge difference in terms of engagement. Other studies have supported that in terms of increasing productivity, which in turn increases the likelihood of the employee staying with that organization. So it re reduces turnover. Helping older people stay and work has wide-reaching benefits too. According to a 2015 report, holding on to workers for just three years beyond normal retirement could add 55 billion pounds to the British economy. It could also increase wages and employment for younger generations. If more older people stay and work, they'll have more money to spend in the economy. But fixing the age demographic time bomb, as some like to put it, isn't just about delaying retirement. For many older workers, there's a simple reason to stop work. Our bodies make it hard to continue. At BMW's Dingolfing plant in southern Germany, the company had noticed a time bomb of their own. The average age of the plant workers in 2007 was 39 and was due to rise to 47 by 2017. Former head of the powertrain plant, Nicholas Bauer, was concerned about what that would mean for productivity. If you bear in mind that older population tend to need longer time to cure from a sickness, have longer absenteeism, have maybe physical abilities which are not as good as from young workers, what can we do? We have to improve A, the competitiveness of the existing factory. The plant are committed to guaranteeing employment to its loyal workers rather than forcing them into early retirement. So it used the situation to learn about its workforce and improve conditions. We created a facility within the plant and installed the age average that the other plant will have in 10 years. Meaning we 
took elder people, brought them to the line, and we took younger people out. Line managers work with the employees to identify what might help them work better and in more comfort. They identified 70 measures which they put in place for a small cost, such as changing footwear, installing wooden flooring and adjustable chairs, and adding variety to the stations the employees worked at throughout the day. It turned out that eight hours on one workstation is physically very, very demanding. We should have a rotation concept. First, something to, for, for, for demanding for shoulders and arms. Then, let's say, uh, something for demanding for the legs. And then, let's say, something demanding for the brain. They were not, in principle, dedicated to improve the productivity. They were dedicated to improve ergonomics. But ergonomics, measures at economics, also turned out to be very helpful for productivity. Within three months, productivity was up 7%. The line's absenteeism rate was halved and the defect rate dropped to zero. All the others which were not dedicated to that line said that is the pensioner's line at first. But the pensioner's line proved to be better than all the other lines within one year. So why do you think the older workers did better? Age brings experience. If you are old, you have already made enough faults, which you won't ever repeat. Ten years later, I can say, this is more or less basic in every BMW factory. According to HSBC, 15% fewer adults will join the workforce within the next two decades. Thanks to coronavirus, the global baby drought could be even more pronounced. Harnessing the contributions of older workers could become a serious competitive advantage. This idea has already birthed a new career path, the returnship. So a returnship is really sort of like a student internship, except it's tweaked for the mid-career professional. It is a short-term work opportunity where the company and the individual have the opportunity to test out the working relationship before the employer makes a hiring decision. Carol Fishman Cohen co-founded iRelaunch, a company specializing in the career re-entry space. We're working with people who are, are returning to work after career breaks for a whole range of reasons. And they could be returning in their 40s, 50s, or 60s. Sometimes people are returning to work after retirement. So they're unretiring because retirement didn't turn out to be what they thought it was going to be. Or maybe they have financial pressure that they weren't expecting. What are employers looking for from relaunches? If you think about the qualities of the relauncher population, they're educated, they have great work experience, they have a mature perspective, they have worked before, they've worked on multi-generational teams, they've worked with different personalities, they face work deadlines, you don't have to teach that to them. Our work lives are getting longer, some of us could spend five or six decades in work, so should we all start thinking differently about our careers? The career break can really be a gift, and I don't think people realize that, but once you're on career break, it's the first time many of us allow ourselves to step back and reflect on whether we were even on the right career path to begin with. Because if you think about it, some of us just fell into a career without really knowing that much about it. It was our first job out of school. We took another job in that same area and all of a sudden we, we had a career. Uh, and others of us were maybe fulfilling other people's expectations, like maybe our parents wanted us to go into a certain field and we were feeling some pressure and so we did that. And that's one of the attributes of people who relaunch their careers is they have a more mature perspective, they know themselves a lot better, and they have a better sense of where they can add the most value to an employer. When you hear progressive workplace, you'd be forgiven for not thinking of financial services right away, but it's where the returnship actually started. It took off throughout Wall Street as the banking industry realized it was losing successful women and its senior roles were thinning out. They're intentionally bringing back people who are older because they want them to fill those mid to senior level roles where, where they haven't had enough women because of attrition over time. It almost goes counter to what you might be thinking about with ageism in the workforce because 
most of the people who get hired through return to work programs are in their 40s or 50s or older. While many might dream of retiring early, for most, it's far from reality. In the US, it's estimated to cost a million dollars to retire at age 65, yet 21% of Americans have no savings. Research also shows that people who stop working and retire lose social contacts and suffer ill health. Employment, on the other hand, brings both physical and mental health benefits and staves off the time we draw on savings and pensions. We really need to think about alternative ways of working. More flexible working arrangements that allow people to phase out of retirement slowly over a longer period of time. Considering things like midlife sabbaticals, considering, you know, education that is more lifelong and extended across the lifespan. We have to be careful when we talk about uh, solutions around working longer to be sure that people are not pushed out of work when they really need it um, and pushed out of health insurance and other benefits that come with working that older adults often need.